Hey. Everybody's like, is she going to make it? I was like, yeah. No, I keep my word. I ain't going to not make it. Thank you. That's what I said. No, she's going to be here. How are you? I'm doing really well. I'm doing really well. How are you? I'm good. I'm so excited to talk to you. I've followed you for quite some time. So I'm super excited for like just your journey that you've been on. Like you make me so proud. Oh, thank black you. Woman. Yes. I really appreciate that. And it always means a lot when people have been there for quite a while or from the beginning because you guys are on the journey with me and it's the support that, you know, keeps me going, you know? Right, right. Um, let's dive right in. If you don't mind, I want to talk a little bit about, so are you familiar with the Megan going live yesterday and kind of talking about what happened with her shooting or whatnot? You know what? I have an audition and I've been so focused. No, um, I haven't even been on the gram, um, but what's going on? So she went on, you know, live and just revealed the details, right, of her being shot and what have you. And it just like stirred up within me. You know, the fact of we're still waiting for justice for Breonna Taylor, right? Um, it's been five years. Yes, 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 exactly. Okay. Okay. It's been, I'm so, you have this shirt on. It's so timely for what I'm about to ask. We're still uh, waiting for Breonna Taylor's justice. Um, Sandra Bland, it's been five years since she was murdered in jail, right? Um, a Tatiana Jefferson, the list goes on, right? And it just made me want to ask you as a black woman, you know, we're on the front lines at the protest, fighting for the justice that, you know, we seek. Say her name is a hashtag. It's a rallying cry for black women. Why as a, a black woman, Nafisa, do you feel like we are often an afterthought and we're often missing in the whole narrative of the fight that we're on the front lines fighting for? Well, I think that goes back to Black people in America uh, not not knowing what equality is. Right. Um, and if you go back to, um, it's a man's world. If you go back, what was it, not even 50, 50 something years ago, women, 50, 60 something years ago, women can even vote. Right. Um, so it's been said that the Black woman is the most disrespected person in America, and that still exists. I mean... You know what I mean? So I think it's uh, it just goes back to equality and it goes back to what this country has been um, founded on and what the foundation is. Right. And um, we've, we've seen some changes. Right. Right. We've seen some, but, but some. not enough. And I, and I think um, it just speaks to us just speaking up. What I'm really proud of is us as black women, first of all, being the fastest growing entrepreneurs in America. Yeah. Yeah. Also, uh, there's a strength that a black woman has in side of her that is unshakable right. and I think we just got to keep doing and keep posting and keep uh, screaming keep hashtagging and, and, and lead by example right, um, right. but it's uh, being a black woman it, 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 uh, it's, it's very uh, hurtful mm -hmm. knowing that we're still fighting for, for, for things that should be just given to us right right um, and that's not the case so and and, and you know, why, why am I still wearing this shirt? You know, and, and I think it's just our responsibility. It's our duty to continue to be the, 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 the superheroes. I say black women are superheroes. Mm -hmm. You're we our both, superhero. <laughs> well, I know that was a little, you know, a little cheesy, but not. I mean right. that when I say that black women mm -hmm. are superheroes, the things that we've endured, the things um, the love that we're able to give our black men, no matter what, no if, ands, or buts, right. is something right. that, that makes me really proud to be a black woman. Right. I just had to ask, because that, that was weighing on me, you know, and I'm going to talk a little bit more later on about, you know, some other things, but it just, as a black woman, it just makes me wonder, you know, why? And why is it, why do we have to fight harder to get acknowledged, to be, why do we have to explain ourselves to be believed? So I just wanted to, you know, get your thoughts and thank you for sharing that with us. You're welcome. Yes. And one last point, why do we have to change our damn hair? Why do we have to change our image uh, to be accepted? And I think for me, my job is to just make sure that I'm letting all the little brown girls know 
that our melanin is it, that yes. we are beautiful, that our hair is unique and strong and, right. and um, makes a statement and it's our crown. So right. uh, for me, it's just about walking in that truth and owning it and letting other brown girls know I never wanted to be any other complexion. Like I always knew I was it, my color was it. Right. And, um, the media and society and culture has taught us something different, yes. but it's just about us making sure that we own that and pass that, that knowledge and that yes. truth on to all the little brown girls that's after us. Yes, I love it. And you were born and raised in Philly, Philly girl. Um, as a child, speaking of like how you talked about us not seeing ourselves, uh, you know, what we were taught, the media, if you will. Mm -hmm. when, when or at what moment did you see on screen yourself reflected? And you said you were watching something or a movie or a TV show, and you said, oh, you know, hey, she looks like me, or that could be our family. At what point was that? I was like four four years old, and it was the Huxtables. Rudy Huxtable did it for me. You I was like, look like Rudy. Yeah. yeah, I was like, wait a minute, she looks like me. And Claire mm -hmm. Huxtable was the epitome of what class and independence and sass and strength was. So the Cosby show was that for me. Um, and that was when I like first saw myself and, and saw that this was what I wanted to do. I knew that I wanted to be on TV and, and, and be that representation. Right. And you went to um, Westchester University and you interned in the homicide unit at the DA's office. Now talk to us about how you went from interning at the DA's <laughs> office to becoming our superhero, our favorite superhero on TV. What what point did you say, okay, this isn't the journey, the career path I want to take. I would like to, what informed your decision, if you will, to become an actress? The experience itself. I was like, this isn't what I see myself doing. Like, you have to go for what you know you want to do. What's in your heart? Like, you right. see yourself here? sitting at this desk for 20, 30 years. And if you do, then stay. But my answer was no. <laughs> and I was just like, I really got back to my truth and to, into my purpose of what, why God put me here. And, and right. I knew that it was entertainment and I knew that it was, you know, doing what I'm doing right now. But it wasn't until I had the experience to tell me what that, that it wasn't for me. Right. And what yeah. advice would you give those who are watching about, you know, they may be in school or they may be graduating um, and they're going into, you know, a certain career path. They're going to be a dentist. But then they become a dentist. They're working or they're interning. And then they say, okay, no, this isn't it. I think I want to go and play golf for a living. Or I want to go and play basketball. Or I want to do something completely different. What advice would you give those people about, you know, taking the job to see if you like it or not? And then if you don't, change paths. What advice would you give? For me, it's about following your purpose and following your heart and tuning out everybody else. Your parents, it's not their lives. It's mm -hmm. not your cousin, your grandmama life, her life. Right. It's, it's, it's about finding your purpose and being in tune with God. For me, it was my spirituality. It was um, knowing what, what that was for me and my purpose. And um, I also wanted to go to college too. So I would never take that experience back. It, it's completely made me who I am. Um, right. But it's really about just following your purpose and following what you know in your heart is going to make you happy. And it's, it's really about tuning out the naysayers. I believe that life begins when we follow our, our purpose and inspire other people to follow, follow theirs. So if that's not being in a dentist's office, if it's not being in a homicide unit, and that is somebody's dream, but you just got to figure out what that is if it's for you. Mm -hmm. And if it's not, like... Man, I told myself, I was like, you could, you, could, you could deny this if you want and be and regret it 20 years from now, or you could start today. And, and that, that was 12 years ago. And I'm, I'm, I think what I'm most proud of myself is and how I became a superhero was when I went for what I wanted to do. I love that. And I think that talk to us about, so you go from, you know, the homicide unit to, you know, acting, films, TV. I think the Meek Mills film was your first was that your first movie? Very first job. Right. And so then you go on to One Life to Live. You go on to um, Pure and uh, Code Black, Black and Blue, which I loved you in. And I loved you in Burning Sands. I love that. That was one of my favorites. So I, I love that movie. And Thank you. talk to us about the, the path in between. What was that journey like from leaving the homicide unit to booking your first job? 
how did you get there? Like, what were the steps to get there? You know, I just made a promise to myself that if you are going to do this career change, yes. you better go and you, you, I promised myself, I made a vow to myself that I was going to go full throttle. I believe um, if you give anything your half attention, yes, it's going to pay you back that way. So I decided to like go full throttle and give it my all and make it my full time job. A lot mm -hmm. of blood, sweat and tears, but it, but it paid me back. I gave it, it was just my focus. It was all my dedication. Um, it was tough. I, I, um, I couldn't live the way I wanted to. I wasn't making money for the first hell. I ain't gonna start making money until Black Lightning because you're just trying to figure it out. Thank you for keeping it real. Yes, yes. Thank you. Yes. I didn't have health insurance for a long time because I just didn't have a job. That was tough. I couldn't live. I, I, it, at one point, I hadn't taken a vacation in almost 10 years because it just wasn't my focus. Um, looking back, I probably would do things differently because money doesn't, you know, uh, control or rule everything that you want to do. But financially, it was really, really hard. Um, I lost a couple friends along the way. I, um, I remember having to ask for gas money at a gas station before because I was trying to get to an audition and I just did not have it. Um, and I think it's just about committing to your dream no matter what. And that's what I did. That's what I did. Um, and it, it, it'll, it'll pay off eventually. I told myself, if it takes 20 years, 30 years, you're going to stick with it. <laughs> well, it paid off because season three of Black Lightning just wrapped in March. <laughs> Congratulations <laughs> to you. Thank you. Um, Thank and your you. castmates, beautiful, beautiful job by you. Um, I've watched the show since season one. So I'm I appreciate it. We all do. Um, season four is set to return next year. Is that right, 2021? Yeah, you know, we don't have a, an exact date. We're just trying to get back to work as everybody else is trying to get back to their normal. But it's definitely set for January 2020, 2021. 2021. Well, we can't wait. Uh, do you have any details about what we can expect? Are we picking up like right where we left off? Like, I want to know what's going on with Grace. Um, I just want to, it's like so many things I want to know. So is I wish I up? had something for you. I really don't. I, I promise I'm not just saying that because it's the okay. thing to say. Um, I can tell you what I want though. Yes. I yes. can tell you what I want. I, I don't want to give away too much, but there, Grace and I was going to take the relationship and, and, and make it a, a, a marriage. Yes. Um, but life got in the way and that didn't happen so i know the fans want to see more of that and maybe see if we'll actually tie the knot so that could be cool if that happens yeah um and i also um i really want to get out in our our costumes and in the street and like kick ass with china i think that's what everybody would love to see including myself yes. yeah yes. that would be fun right i love um, god's relationship too i love you and china's relationship that is a relationship. What you see on film is something that we have off camera, and that, I think that's what makes it uh, what it is because we we love each other in real life, and that feels like my baby it sister. Shows. Yeah, um, and also I've never had any run-ins with Tobias. That'd be cool for me too. We've never had a moment together on, on camera, so that would be cool. So those are some of the things that I would like to see, but I really I don't know nothing, y'all. I ain't even gonna hold you. <laughs> Okay, because you know the people be in my DMs. When I'm interviewing y'all, they are the DC people. They're like, okay, yeah. can you find out this? I want to know this. Um, so let me go back. Season one. So the first episode, yep. it opens with you getting arrested and being released, you know, from attending a protest. And you guys are pulled over, a racially profiled police stop, if you will, aggressive. Um, yep. Fast forward to today. Um, yep. The subject matter still very timely of, you know, what we're currently facing. Yeah. Um, I love how Black Lightning tackles those issues of social, the social issues, if you will. Um, do you think that that's why the show resonates with people so much is because they can relate? Although it's a superhero show, it's still very relatable in the sense of you can be in the hood or you can be in the suburbs or, you know, maybe living in the suburbs, but you grew up in the hood. It's very mm -hmm. relatable to people because especially black and brown people because we see ourselves reflected in the storyline why do you think this show resonates with people so i think it's because of what you just said it's real you mm -hmm. know and i think for black people we ain't ever had superheroes coming into the hood that we watching on tv that feels like what we know right you know it's always this like abstract made up uh universe 
right. where on Black Lightning, it looked like where we grew up at, you know, if, if exactly. you're from the city, you know? So I think yeah. that alone is what resonates. Also, we always stay really true to what's going on here in America, no matter how hard, uncomfortable um, it can be. But we, right. we, our creators, our producers, Mara and Selena Kill, they've made sure that we stuck to to keeping it as real as possible, as authentic as possible, and making sure that our show is a mirror for what's happening. And it's sad to say that first scene of, of me getting arrested and protesting. <laughs> right. A damn shame that is still very relevant today. So I'm grateful for our show. I'm grateful. Uh, and I hope that we are doing our part to, to spark change because clearly we still need it. Yeah, definitely. You break down many barriers in this in this role, you're the first black lesbian. Um, also, the Pierce family is the first black superhero family on TV. Um, when you found out that you would be playing um, this role, that you would be making history, did it impact or affect the way you would approach your character? You know, when I first went out for this job, I didn't even know. It was like they were really low on what it was. Mm -hmm. um, I had never heard of Black Lightning before, which is sad, <laughs> you know. Yeah. Um, but when I found out that I got the role, I think I was just really excited and proud of what we were doing as a, as a, as a Black people. And I just, some people ask me, like, were you, did you feel pressure to play a lesbian? Or did you feel pressure of it being, like you said, the first black lesbian superhero? Mm -hmm. And I just wanted to make sure that she was real and authentic. And, and right. I felt like if I did that and I came from a place of love when it came to her love life, then, right. then I'd be cool. Right, right. And do you feel like you have done justice to that representation? Have the people, have the, has the response been, you know, in the fact that, You've done us well. You've done us proud. You know, I'm, I'm always, it, it's, it's very fulfilling when I have young teenagers, mm -hmm. lesbian teenagers say that they feel normal after mm -hmm. seeing Thunder. Right. If, 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 if nothing else, that alone is, is, is my job. That's my job is to inspire and to empower as an artist. And right. um, I believe that that's happening from the feedback. So that, 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 I couldn't ask for anything else. How has playing a superhero impacted you in your real life? Like, what have you discovered about yourself that in your real life it trickles over? Playing a superhero. What, what have I discovered about myself mm -hmm. that I maybe have learned from, from Thunder? Yes. She just has a fearlessness to her. And when she wants something, I, I mean, I'm always, if I'm feeling a little afraid of something, I just remind myself. And, you know, I play her for most of the year. So mm -hmm. um, I'm always inspired by her fearlessness. And um, she sets really strict boundaries. And when she right. wants something, she sticks to it. And, like, there's no talking her out of it. And that right. is always really, really inspiring. And I have some of that in me. But there's mm -hmm. times when we ain't always feeling our best. <laughs> you know right. what I mean? So to <laughs> right. play someone who does have to be on and who does, you know, go for exactly what she wants at all times is really inspiring. And what's the most exciting part of playing a superhero? Is it the costume? It's is the costume. It like when I put that costume on, sis, you can't tell me nothing. I can imagine. <laughs> See, I'll be the same way. I'll be like, look. It be the costume when I first put it on, you know, for one, I had a moment of just like full on gratitude being like, is this really, really happening? Right. Um, but but it's, it's just something, it's a strength that comes with that, that superhero costume that makes me just feel like I can do anything. <laughs> Man, which, which suit do you prefer? Like Blackbirds is a little less, it's simple, right? And then Thunders is the full on, which do you prefer? I prefer the look of Thunders, but the comfort of Blackbirds because Thunder, it takes about a good 35, 40 minutes just to get in the costume. I need two people to help me. I can't go to the bathroom without two people helping me. Oh, wow. um, so, but there's just, I think the Thunder costume is just very powerful. And when I first put it on, I cried. Me and my best friends cried. It was just oh, like, a, it, it was a thing. Right. Um, I'm super excited about season four to come. Um, Talk to us before we move on to the next uh, topic. Talk to us a little bit about like how playing a superhero on film 
what what is your family what how does that make your family feel your your mom your dad or your sister i know you have a little sister are they like blown away by watching you on film on camera rather on screen killing it as this black superhero literally on network tv yeah they're really really proud and i have two younger sisters i'm actually the oldest of four so um they're super proud and i think for me it's just about showing them that they could do whatever you know what i mean and i think right. by by doing that is leading by example and yes. following my dreams like i would I, I like to think that they know anything is possible <laughs> at this yeah. point but they're really proud um they have been watching me do it for a while, you know, mm -hmm. like my little sister, she's been watching me do it since she was a baby. Um, mm -hmm. So it kind of becomes something that they're kind of used to at this point, but, but Thunder for sure blew everybody away. She blew us all the way, so we can't Aww. wait. If you um, tweet, tweet us, let us know when we can watch it, um, January 2021. Those, have not, those who have not caught up on the series can catch up on Netflix. Seasons one through three. Um, super excited about the show. Love you on the show. Let me ask you also, what is your dream project? Who would you like to work with next? I would love to do a film with Denzel. Yes. I mean, come on. <laughs> I mean, you need to. I yeah, that would be really, 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 yeah, that'd be really, really cool. And I'd also love to play Whitney Houston. That'd be really Ooh. dope. Or Diana Ross. Okay, I see it. I, I want to do biopic. I love impersonations. I love uh, to to uh, recreate something that has already been out there. Um, right. Comedy is something else that I really, really love. And I, I'm really looking forward to y'all seeing that side of me because everything yeah. has been so dramatic. But I'm really silly and fun and the girl you just want to kick it with. And I right. like making people laugh. So mm -hmm. that's what's next for me in my head. Okay. We'll, mm -hmm. we'll be, we're here for it. We'll be ready for that. That's I love up. it. I love it. Um, Nafisa, you recently penned a heartfelt, such an important letter for E! News, um, calling for Hollywood to confront the inequality um, that we so face in this industry. Um, in the letter you state, I'm really honored to be on a show with an all-Black cast, producers, writers, and crew. However, that's not the case on many shows. We need more shows with representation both in front and behind the camera. <laughs> Why was it so important for you to write this? It was so heartfelt. Like I felt, Aww. you know, I felt like it was it was very real. It wasn't some fluff. It wasn't like, you know, you were trying to be anything other than you. And I really got it. Why was it important for you to call for this justice and rally for this inclusivity for Hollywood? Well, I believe when God gives you a platform and when he gives you uh, any sort of notoriety from a TV show or artistic, you know, background, mm -hmm. that it's our duty to use our voice. Yes. And I mean, if Thunder ain't inspire me to do anything, I'm going to really shout and scream and protest and, and use my voice right. for change. And right. I believe we're not believe we are living in a time where um, we still have a lot of work to do. A and lot. I just wanted, yeah, we have a lot in all industries. And I mentioned that in there. It's not just in Hollywood. It's in mm -hmm. all industries. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I just wanted to use my voice. And I just wanted to say how I really felt and be really authentic and honest about it all. Mm -hmm. um, and I was grateful for you for that platform to be able to do so. Because we all got to just do our part in whatever that is. Whatever right. way that is, we got to step up and we have to do our part. And um, particularly in my industry, um, I want to see all those changes that I talked about. Right. right. You know, and, and, and again, being really grateful for Salim and Mara Kill for there's a lot of issues that are going on on other sets that I can't personally relate to right now. And I'm so grateful for that. Um, but this show could be over soon. And I got other friends on other shows who are dealing with the same issues. And like I said, I'm grateful for Black Lightning, but there needs to be more of it. There needs yes. to be equal pay for Black women, for right. Black actors. Right. Um, we need people who know how to do our hair and understand uh, the stories that we're telling. And I believe it's just time to change. It's just time. It's been it's time. Good. And speaking of hair, first of all, I love your relationship with Keith. Uh -huh. like, I absolutely love how y'all ride for each other, support each other. It's a genuine love. And I so appreciate that. In the letter, you also advocated for 
the hiring of more black hairstylists. Yeah. Again, more people behind the scenes, not just in front of the camera, but behind the camera, because that's also important. What is your hope as we move forward in Hollywood with holding the powers that be accountable for the promises that they've made in the past few months? What is your hope? Well, my hope is equality. My hope is fairness. My hope is that Black actors can go on set and, and feel comfortable when they get there. And just going back to Key for a second, yeah. I'm really grateful for their relationship. I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be here without her. It's, it's, like a it's beautiful. Me, and we started this journey together and we'll, 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 we'll end it together. Um, but I, I want her to have the same opportunities, someone who's qualified. Right. Who's well overqualified yeah. to walk on any set and execute right. any kind of hair. Uh, we're not asking for you to give us jobs. We're educated. We're experienced. We are right. knowledgeable in all of these areas. So I just want for us to be able to go to set and feel comfortable. Uh, prior to Black Lightning, I've been on plenty of sets where I go with my hair done because I know they ain't going to know what to do with it because they're, they're not people who are qualified and experienced. To, to handle my hair. Right. So yeah, my hope is equality. My hope is change. My hope is that we're hiring the right people for who are qualified for these jobs. Well, I hope the people are listening. Um, it was a beautiful letter. If you guys haven't seen it, you can go on E! News and, or Google it. It's on Google. If you it's actually Google. on my page too. So go on my page and yep, go read it. Go on there, read it. It's beautiful. Um, the DC fandom kicks off tomorrow. Talk to us a little bit about that. You guys' panel kicks off September 12th, though, right? Is that right? You know what? I got to check that date, but I'll post it. I want to okay. say it, it kicks off this month as well, but I'm not 100% sure, but we'll post it. But the fandom, yes, kicks off yes. this weekend. And um, that was really, really fun. We're just trying to find ways to, to still have that engagement since Comic-Con was canceled. Right. And um, it's really, really fun. It's a lot of good stuff in store. We have a really great host. Robert Townsend was our host for our panel. Oh, and I love it. We love Robert. We love Robert. Yes. He directs some of our episodes every year. Um, right. So it's going to be fun. DC fan, make sure y'all check it out. And so where can people, like, do they go to, where, where can they go to find it and watch it? So Sorry. I'll be posting it on my page, but it's a okay. DC fandom link that, yep, we'll, we'll have it posted up. Perfect, perfect. Yeah. Um, so before we go, I'm doing like this five questions in five seconds. Like I just started the other day. So, okay. Um, you're my second. <laughs> so okay. I'm ask you five questions. Hopefully we can answer in five seconds. Um, Thunder or Blackbird? Thunder. Uh, Freeland or Philly? Philly. <laughs> Talking or texting? Talking. Okay. Best compliment you've ever received? Ooh. ooh okay. Best compliment I bet I can pray. I can give you a good prayer. <laughs> okay. Heels <laughs> or sneakers? Ah, it depends. Okay. Okay. I'm here That's for tough. it. I'm just saying. I'm the same. It really depends. In quarantine, I've been in sneakers a lot. I have to, I put the heels up. I'm like, okay, no heels. Nafisa, right. thank you so much for your time. Oh, you're welcome. I, I truly appreciate you, Queen. Um, you everything that I expected. So Aww. we support you and we have your back and we riding with you. So whatever you doing. I appreciate y'all and thank you, seriously. Yes. Thank no, you, beautiful. Thank you. you look cute today. I like your hair. I wore black I like for black lining for you. <laughs> But thank right, you so, so much. Be safe. And good luck on your audition. I pray you get it, whatever it was. Thank you. You went. Bye. Bye. Where is the buzz? Oh, yeah. Where is the buzz? You said we used to be a mine, oh, mine. Where is the buzz? <laughs>